I had uh, uh, a strange uh, event in the sense uh, my first uh, the first of uh, of the event went really well for me, uh, but at some point uh, I started to uh, try out some uh, inferior openings just to create some chances, but. Uh, it was uh, it wasn't going well for me because uh, most of the time I was uh, uh, trying to hold on, you know. So the, that was not really uh, a good idea to uh, try out something new. But then you are suffering uh, uh, every day. Dear listeners, welcome to another edition of the Let's Talk About Chess podcast. After the Vikings A Storytellers series, I return to a regular episode of the podcast, but my next guest has also a lot to tell about Vikings A, because he not only played in this year's edition, but he debuted in Vikings A in 2001 and played eight tournaments there in total. We will also talk about his first book about the French, which was published in late 2020 and some other highlights of the year. So, without further ado, let's talk about chess with Super Grandmaster Pentala Hari Krishna. Welcome, Hari. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, thanks for having me on your podcast. Uh, say, uh, it's uh, it has. How how are you doing? And uh, hello to all the listeners of this show. Yeah, thank you. I'm doing fine. Uh, it's not snowing here. I live near Frankfurt, so uh, I'm doing fine. How are you doing after this tournament in Vaikanze? How did uh, did you rec- we were recording this one week after the uh, tournament has stopped? And uh, did you recover a bit after this tournament? Yes, yes, uh, definitely. You know, uh, when you uh, get a chance to play in an event like uh, Tata Steel Masters, uh, especially uh, in such situation. Um, Definitely, it is a tiring event, no doubt, but uh, it is a pleasantly tiring uh, uh, event. So, of course, I, it took some time for me to recover after uh, all the games and, uh, you know, the, the stress and uncertainty of, uh, you know, when, uh, how uh, it is going to be and all that. Uh, still, I was uh, quite confident about uh, the organization, uh, I would say. Um, they did uh, uh, an excellent job um, because it's it's extremely difficult to uh, organize uh, an over the board event, and despite uh, all the challenges uh, which uh, which are in place uh, to to even think of organizing, it is one thing, but to actually complete that event uh, successfully without any kind of mishap during the event. Uh, is a commendable job, I would say. And of course, uh, uh, this is really a special event for me personally, uh, since uh, um, uh, Tata Steel is probably um, the first um, major or uh, the, the, you know, first major event for me back in 2001. Uh, I played uh, in Challengers, uh, me and Timur, uh, were fighting for the GM norms as well as the qualification for the uh, those times it was called uh, uh, chorus. Uh, but um, uh, definitely, it's uh, it's excellent to play in Tata still. Yeah, yeah. We we'll come to that to some old uh, tournaments a bit later, perhaps. Um, yeah, I saw that some some other players after the Tata still already played. Uh, Anton David played in Salamanca, I think, in Spain, played a tournament, and some others like Giri and uh, Magnus already playing an online tournament again. How do, how do you recover it in, in general from a tournament? I think it is actually not such a bad idea to play another event to recover from the previous event. Uh, it may sound very strange, uh, but... Uh, uh, sometimes when you are tired, uh, you can also play good, but at at certain moment, moment it might, uh, you know, take over. Like somehow, uh, maybe the first two days or three days can go very well because you are in this mood, you have this practice, uh, you uh, looked over various uh, way openings and uh, you are in good shape. Uh, but eventually, you know, after a long event like uh, Tata Steel, uh, it's really difficult, but uh, I'm glad that, uh, you know, they are uh, playing 
uh, as chess players and uh, top chess players we have to promote the game and uh, to you know uh, of course sometimes you would just want to go go back and rest but uh, um, as top chess players we have some responsibilities and of course uh, um, even if magnus takes rest no one would uh, would say anything but uh, uh, he wants to, you know, uh, play and show his best chess. So it's yeah. great. Okay, okay. You, t- you, you were uh, invited, I think, in December, I think, yeah, because two players uh, who were originally planned for the tournament, uh, Nepomnichi and Mamed Yarov, they had to cancel. Exactly. And then you came in, yeah? Uh, uh, yeah. Were you surprised a bit or, or how was uh, it for you? I was a replacement for Mamed Yarov, I believe. Yeah. And uh, it was in the month of December. And of course, uh, um, I was uh, uh, invited well in advance. Unlike, uh, you know, Don Chenko had to yeah. come probably like two days before or something. So I had sufficient time. I had uh, enough uh, uh, enough time to get into the mindset of playing an event over the board. And uh, I did have time to prepare um, uh, for the uh, for players, I mean, it's it's hard to prepare uh, both white and black uh, against all the op- opponents when uh, you know any op- any player can uh, change at any uh, any po- given point. Uh, but of course, uh, I I was uh, in um, uh, tournament organ uh, director Euron. I mean, good friend of mine. Uh, so um, he informed me that uh, if I am interested, and of, I immediately said, of course, I. I would be glad, but then, of course, I had to check like uh, the travel arrangements and uh, what are the uh, COVID uh, restrictions and uh, all the uh, uh, how to, you know, uh, quarantine and various other stuff, of course. But uh, I, I, I saw that everything was in order and uh, they did uh, uh, send me the de- details about uh, mm. Uh, what 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 to do and what not to do? <laughs> what not to do? Okay, <laughs> was how was it then from a from a player's perspective? When did you arrive in the Netherlands before the tournament? Uh, so I arrived uh, two days uh, before the start of the event, um, and uh, like opening ceremony took place uh, on four, on the fourteenth, and the fifteenth was just free day, and sixteenth we started to play. So. Yeah, technically, it's three days before the yeah, yeah. event started, I can say. Of course, uh, it's a special uh, situation as uh, all the restaurants and everything uh, are closed for sitting. You know, uh, they do deliver or you can go to the restaurants and uh, take uh, take away. But, uh, you know, you remember this Italian restaurant and some other uh, restaurants. Uh, so they, they all of them are closed due to uh, more regulations yeah. just one week before the event uh, started. So, but uh, of course, it, it was uh, uh, it was not a problem to get food because uh, you can just call and uh, you would get it in like 30 minutes or so. Yeah. But uh, still, I would prefer to eat. <laughs> to eat out, yes, yeah, sure. In yeah. the restaurant. Sure, but, sure, sure. Okay, this is what we got. Yeah, but it was maybe then very different from a normal tournament because I spoke to some other grandmasters said that except for the, for the possibility to go out and eat, you just do walking on the beach, you're playing, you're preparing and sleeping. Yeah, that's what the, what you do during a tournament. So it's not that much different, perhaps this year. Uh, so one of the major differences are, uh, is uh, that. Um... Uh, during 10 days, the first mm-hmm. 10 days, uh, players or uh, anyone uh, with the players are not allowed to enter the supermarkets as well as the public uh, transport uh, uh, yeah, bus sure. or anywhere. Yeah. So therefore, um, you can't really go to, uh, you know, Bivouac or any other place for the first 10 days or get supermarkets. Uh, on the other hand, um, Tata Steel team, um, you know, they they were bringing whatever stuff 
uh, we I request you know I even forgot my toothbrush and uh, I, see, okay. I got like three so <laughs> <laughs> so the I I, I think uh, these kind of uh, I mean these these small small things make uh, feels you know yeah good when you are playing uh, in special conditions so uh, these are the, the small details are, uh, are very important and uh, I, I i really like that you know whatever i asked and uh, it was arranged immediately okay. so of course um, you can say i couldn't go to supermarket etc but on the other hand you know we have to get uh, used to the conditions uh, there mm-hmm. is no other way yeah sure Okay, were you alone in Vaikanse or did you have a second yes. with you? you yes, yes, uh, I was alone uh, in Vaikanse. Um, well, <laughs> it's hard to persuade my second to go with me, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of the players had a second, yeah, I think. Yes. Um, uh, Peter uh, Nielsen was there, I think, and uh, Kasim yes, Janov. Yes, Fabiano and, uh, came uh, yeah. with second and, uh, yeah. well, uh, some of the juniors came with... Uh, uh, fathers uh, yeah sure uh, parents i think mm. and uh, i think jordan came with the sec- uh, a second yeah. anish too yeah yeah that's cool did you already play a bit through your games are you in general satisfied with your score you scored six and a half out of uh, 13, well actually 50%? my score is uh, my score is pretty good compared to my play <laughs> really uh, so i had uh, uh, a strange uh, event in the sense uh, my first uh, the first of of the event went really well for me uh, but at some point uh, I st- started to uh, try out some uh, inferior openings just to create some chances but uh, it was uh, it wasn't going well for me because uh, most of the time I was uh, uh, trying to hold on you know so the, that was not really uh, a good idea to uh, try out something new but then you are suffering uh, uh, every day uh, of course uh, the first half was uh, pretty good um, uh, but somewhere when I lost to Ali Reza I, uh, I think from there on I, I mean I, 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 I didn't score minus uh, uh, you know minus three or something yeah. uh, but on the other hand uh, the, uh, the loss against Jordan was completely unnecessary and uh, I it was more like I just went there and uh, gave a point and came back, you know. So <laughs> that was very disappointing. But uh, I mean, overall, if you see, uh, my score isn't bad. Really, six and a half is uh, is a decent uh, decent score in uh, I can say yeah. um, with uh, such strong uh, players. But uh, my play, uh, I should have played better uh, in the second half. That's how I feel. Yeah. yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? It's such a long tournament, and uh, this you have to. I don't know if you have to develop a kind of strategy. Maybe if, if you play thirteen rounds, and it's if it, I talked to Luke Favedi, I think last week or a couple of weeks. Where if, when you have a bad start and start with two losses for something, then you're going to suffer the whole tournament, don't you? Yeah, exactly. In uh, in a thirteen round event, of course, uh, if you there mostly it will be like two sections you are either targeting or you are being targeted kind of a thing you know so if you start uh, like minus two or my whatever is some lo- losses uh, then uh, all, almost everyone will try to uh, win against you uh, which of course puts a lot of pressure on you and to you know defend every day is uh, quite difficult of, uh, and also um Wike is uh, long, longer time control uh, with uh, um, 100 minutes for 40 moves, uh, uh, 20 moves in 50 minutes, I think, and then there is one more time control. Uh, so that's, uh, I think, really a long one. Uh, in such scenarios, it's 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 really important to start well. So then you get this good feeling and uh, you you play well. Even so, it's uh, it's it's really difficult to keep up the momentum uh, until the end of the event. And as you uh, can see, that Anish did extremely well in the second half of the event. Yeah. Uh, he uh, and also. 
uh, other juniors uh, like Jordan and uh, Yesipenko and uh, um, Ali Reza. So all of them uh, did extremely well in the second half. I mean, everyone was around plus one or plus two uh, yeah. until the middle. Um, but, uh, you know, these, these four players, I think, did extremely well. Yeah, they were the youngest players then in the tournament. It was, it was quite interesting to see that you were the oldest participant. Did you realize that before you went yes, during actually, the tournament? Uh, yes, yes, Is it actually, the first time yes. that you were the oldest one during the tournament? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, uh, <laughs> it was uh, really funny because um, uh, when uh, uh, Shahriar uh, canceled and I was invited, um, so I accepted the invitation and then like maybe after a day or two uh, when my uh, wife saw the players list and he, she was like, did you realize you are the young uh, oldest uh, <laughs> participant in the event? So, And then I was uh, hoping that, uh, you know, there were still some uh, players who could, uh, who could have troubles. Uh, so I was hoping uh, Erwin to play at the last minute replacement ah, yeah. or something like that. So I won't be the oldest participant. Uh, but of course, uh, at the end, I, uh, I think Donchenko came, of course. <laughs> so I was the oldest participant. Uh, it's a nice feeling. I mean, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, being oldest, you have, you can, you you can get away with some things, of course. <laughs> uh, but uh, I mean, it's it's really great field. Uh, everyone was friendly. Um, I know most of the most of the uh, players quite well, yes. and uh, nice atmosphere in in general. And uh, funnily, uh, many of the players are my teammates in various leagues, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think at least half of the players are my teammates in different leagues in uh, Czech Republic or Germany um, and so on. So it's really, uh, uh, I, I, I know the players really well. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, this is, but it's interesting to see where the standings, I see the standings right here right now, that the youngest players then came up uh, you know, the top top three, top five or something. Yeah, is it, yeah. A, is it well, okay, they Really young. Were you surprised by Jordan, for example, winning the tournament? Um, I, I mean, uh, he he played uh, he played really well. Uh, it's uh, I, I I cannot say that I'm surprised that he won the event and things like that. Mm. Uh, but he really played well uh, in the uh, uh, throughout the event, and he always uh, came with new ideas. So he was uh, it was pretty clear that he wanted to you know do well uh, whether he want he 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 was planning on winning or not i i have no idea um, but uh, i can say it was uh, uh, it was uh, it, it was incredible uh, uh, tie break which happened uh, between anish and jordan and uh, the fact that two dutch players uh, you know uh, are playing for the first place is uh, incredible and I, I think it shows that uh, um, the level of that chess has improved uh, tremendously to uh, in last couple of uh, years. Um, of course, Jordan is my teammate. Um, and uh, I, I know he that... Should, sorry, he's your teammate in which which country? Is he your teammate? Uh, in Germany. In Germany. In Solingen. In, uh, for Solingen. Play okay. for Solingen. So, okay. mm-hmm. uh, so uh, you know, he uh, sometimes can have uh, bad events, but when it is going his way, he can uh, he can do really uh, well. And uh, I think he, he felt very good in uh, Tata Steel and yeah. also... Uh, his second did a pretty good job uh, by coming up with various interesting ideas in almost every game. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he, they, they, clearly they were, uh, all the juniors were, were um, extremely motivated. And uh, um, I, I, I mean, uh, it's, it's, I am not really surprised with uh, uh, the fact that they did well. Uh, why not? Because... Uh, uh, if you play well, <laughs> you are going to do well, and uh, that's how it is. And uh, if you see, look at the games, uh, it's clear that uh, the games were really of high quality uh, in Tata State. Yeah. 
What do you think in general about this uh, tiebreak, uh, about the playoffs? Is it? Do you think it was a tradition? If I can say that we had joint winners, no? if I can say two or three, I, but do you think uh, we need I, I, we need a winner, a specific winner, by doing a tiebreak? Um, so first thing is that uh, I think the tiebreak system has, like the playing playoff uh, uh, rule, has been uh, included maybe like four or five years ago. Yeah. I I don't I think before it was just. Uh, uh, like you know, three players or two players, yeah. whoever is having the same points. I think the um, first playoff was a couple of years ago between uh, Anish and uh, Magnus Carlsen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Two thousand eighteen, I think, right? Two thousand eighteen. Yeah, it was two thousand eighteen. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I, I can check that. Or we listen. I can check. I think yeah. it was. Really, yeah. Okay. Uh, I check it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Two thousand eighteen. Sure. Nine. Yeah. They both had nine points. Okay. Yes. Exactly. So uh, anyway, um, uh, I think uh, for the tiebreak, it, it is good uh, to have a clear uh, winner as much as it's, uh, it is, you know, like when two players are uh, scoring equal points after 13 days and uh, a long event, it might sound slightly unfair that one person cannot be called, called joint winner. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, uh, you know, spectators uh, love a clear winner. And uh, of course, we need to have a clear winner. Uh, at the same time, uh, I think the, the playoff uh, is a good, good idea, no doubt. Uh, but it is better to start the playoff after uh, all the games are uh, yeah. over. Uh, and then uh, it won't disturb anyone because, you know, when when uh, a classical game is going on and uh, a blitz or uh, or even armageddon is going on it can be uh, quite disturbing sure. in my opinion because of course uh, in blitz you can't really press the clock uh, as soft as possible or uh, move pieces in a uh, you know normal way so of course it's much better to play um, if the if if they if the tie break should take place before it should be in a, uh, held in a different place uh, rather than near the classical game. Uh, finally, be, uh, the, uh, the uh, of course in this particular case, Ali uh, uh, even if he had won, he was not uh, he was not qualifying. Uh, but that's a little bit strange as well. Uh, I mean, it's better to have uh, like all the participants who scored um, equal and numbers to somehow uh, have the chance to play for the playoff rather than uh, to determine uh, based on a specific tie break to, to have the two players fight for the place. Because uh, if we have, have uh, four participants on the same, uh, same points, so you should, uh, uh, you should give... The chance also, you know, in tie breaks, it can be very tricky because some of them might play more blacks. <laughs> some of them might have scored good against the uh, uh, the top, top half of the uh, yeah. sc top scorers. Uh, so it's, it's really difficult to, uh, there is no perfect uh, way to determine these two, pe two uh, participants. And so uh, if you are going to have a playoff, it's better to have a playoff between uh, all the players who uh, scored equal uh, yeah. number of points. Yeah, I think so too. It's a, especially for the people who are not really familiar with all these tiebreak rules. It's a bit confusing why Ali Reza, for example, in this case, for example, was not allowed to play and then Jordan and Anish were just playing. Yeah, but that, that yeah. it's difficult to... to, to, uh, to, to to tell that to the people who are, as I said, who are not really into this tiebreak rules and stuff. And exactly, cetera. exactly. Yeah. And uh, you know, since uh, uh, you can uh, you can expect that some of the chess players or chess fans who have uh, who were following the all the tie breaks and other things might might understand. Uh, but to uh, to make a common uh, chess uh, lover to understand why. Uh, if uh, three players are, uh, you know, sharing the yeah, sure. same number of points, why two players are playing? And is it some kind of, uh, you know, already decided that he will not play or, you know, all kinds of unnecessary uh, uh, confusion because 
basically it's better just to have all the participants who scored equal and equal number of points uh, to fight for the uh, place uh, if necessary maybe instead of the rest day you can even have uh, uh, that day for the tie breaks you know if if necessary yeah. Yeah. then they 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 don't have to move anybody huh. yeah it's, it's it's very difficult for the organization to to yeah. to find the best solution maybe you can do a i don't know blitz tournaments in between or something for all participants and the winner of that tournament is also well uh, higher higher rated one is is going to to, to win the tournament or something, I don't know. It's difficult. Well, generally, uh, it is. Uh, uh, um, there are a couple of things. Uh, how fair it is? Let's say uh, some people, uh, some players finish their games after like one or two hours, and then yeah. they are waiting for tie break. And someone who is playing for six hours, and then they need to play the blitz. Uh, so th there isn't any uh, perfect solution. And I understand, uh, I mean, organize, organizing uh, an event uh, is extremely difficult. Uh, it's easy to, you know, we can say, why didn't you do this? Yeah, or, sure. Because I'm not the one who is organizing uh, uh, 100, 100 things uh, in connecting, connection yeah. to, uh, to the event. Uh, but uh, probably it's, uh, it's, uh, it could be uh, an idea that uh, we had three rest days. So maybe the one of the rest days can be uh, given for the tie break uh, after the event and then um, to have the closing ceremony and so on. So maybe that could be an idea. It's, um, it's of course, uh, up, to, up to the organizers sure. and uh, they have their own, uh, own plans. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, almost like six to eight months before they make all these plans so yeah 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 i think they learned from this uh, this event of course and uh, we will see how it, how it will go next year if yeah it's... i i i just would like to add one thing sure. uh, i mean definitely it's unfortunate and uh, it's uh, it's not uh, it's it's a mistake uh, to move uh, uh, to ask the uh, players during the uh, during the uh, round, uh, but uh, I I request that uh, the event Tata Steel should uh, should be remembered uh, for other good things that has happened. You know, like uh, it should not be remembered just uh, by this one incident, but also uh, that they have created this event where uh, excellent games played by Ali Reza, Anish, and you know all the uh, players. So I, I do hope that it is. Uh, you can remember this incident, but uh, you should also remember the uh, overall uh, good things happened because of the event. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great that you said that. Yeah, there's was some wonderful uh, two and a half weeks of chess for all the chess lovers all over the world who were yeah. stick at had to stick at home in lockdown or somewhere, and they uh, were happy actually, to see uh, some chess. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, it's uh, uh, I mean I can tell you the um, I won't say it a difficulty or I did for you know anything, but uh, basically we had to have an antigen test every uh, before every rest day. So in total, I had like two PCR tests and four antigen tests. So all this is to, uh, uh, we, uh, I mean, this is not just for us, but everyone in, in, uh, involved with the organization, uh, press and many, many, uh, many members uh, involved in the organization. Um, uh, it was really strict, <laughs> so uh, we had to, uh, uh, you know, sacrifice probably for from players' point of view a little bit. Uh, but if you see, everyone was with masks uh, uh, throughout the game time every day. Um, so that's uh, th all those things are also there, uh, and that is the reason why I say this is spe special uh, event, and uh, it should not be. Uh, remembered for uh, just for this unfortunate incident.
Okay, let's move on a bit. As, as I said early on, you played eight times in Vaikansay now. The yeah. first time was 2001. <laughs> you were 14 years old. I think you're one of... You were not the youngest one because I think Timur Rajabov in the B group was 13, I think. Yes, yes, um, he was. Uh, he was. Uh, he was. Nine he was months. one year old, nine months yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 What do you remember from that first time, I can say? Uh, many, uh, many uh, things. Uh, well, uh, whenever I go to Waikanze, I remember the hotel where I stayed. Uh, and, you know, the, the, that was the first time I saw snow in my uh, life. Uh, so, he, and, uh, you know, I was, uh, um, it was the first time I played, uh, an event abroad, uh, in the sense, uh, uh, closed event, uh, mm -hmm. to where I could make, uh, my GM norm, uh, you know, like, and I, I did play, uh, at the chess Olympiad before, uh, before coming to Wyke. Uh, but I have never seen uh, snow in my life. So it was, uh, I used to watch in movies and so on, but it was great feeling when I uh, came to Wyke. And uh, I do remember uh, uh, someone asking me, how do you like the weather? I said, it was fantastic. And then, <laughs> <laughs> they, and then <laughs> I, do, I, I, they were, I mean, the interviewer was a bit shocked because I, you know, Wyke is uh, windy and uh, so on. Um, but uh, of course, I, I later, I mean, the snow enthusiasm of obviously <laughs> will go after some years and then the wind, uh, wind and stuff. But uh, I made my GM norm, so it it is really a special event. And uh, I was actually invited for the C group initially. But uh, later on, uh, I got chance to play in uh, B group, uh, where I could make my GM norm. Yeah. And uh, even uh, reaching Waikanze was also quite an adventure for me uh, in terms of uh, my travel arrangements, visas, and stuff. In those days, it was everything was an adventure. <laughs> yeah, especially when you're 14. Yeah, yes. this year you. I came. Uh, I came uh, with my trainer, uh, Porugi Skoshi, um, yeah. back in uh, 2001, and uh, well, well, we. Uh, it was uh, nice. He, he, I could play whatever I wanted, and uh, it, it it went really well. So, yeah, he's got six, six and a half yeah, again. <laughs> like uh, say. But yeah, it's only, uh, only 12 players. Yeah, sure. uh, it's only 12 players. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I lost to someone uh, in the penultimate round, uh, probably against uh, uh, Naibor. It was Naibor, yes. Fritz Naibor, he, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I made my GM norm and then I lost the tenth round. So yeah. <laughs> that, that usually you, happens. Yeah. You lose the tension, then and maybe yes. you're happy, and then yeah, yeah. I can remember that 2001 event as well because it was all also the last tournament uh, uh, Kasparov played in. Yeah, you played on the same stage more or less uh, as Kasparov, right? Yes, 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 exactly. I mean, of course, uh, I was watching uh, these great players playing next to me and uh, I, uh, I, I was like, okay, when am I going to play <laughs> to the other side of the <laughs> playing hall? Uh, but Just, uh, yes, yeah. indeed, it was great, uh, great opportunity for me to play besides uh, all the great players. And to uh, to see them analyzing after the games and so on. Uh, of course, I I, um, uh, uh, I I remember there was uh, even a question at the closing because uh, uh, Gary won with uh, ten points in ninety nine, nine and a half in 2009 points so you know every year with each year <laughs> half a point was going uh, <laughs> from his score uh, but uh, of course great games uh, every yeah. year so yeah yeah i'll just look at the table right here from the 2001 a tournament i think kasparov won anand two kramnik three i mean that's uh and Ivan took fourth, so that says enough about the strength of the field and about the players yeah. who are playing there. Lego played there, Topalov played, uh, 
Tim on plate. I think, uh, I think yeah. Leko was not feeling well uh, mm. for some uh, some part, or he got some kind of uh, uh, fever from uh, his previous event in uh, Delhi, I believe. Okay, could be. Um, but uh, it was also I, I remember that uh, Kramnik uh, drew against Leko because he could not play or something like that. So you know there were some uh, interesting uh, lessons. You know. <laughs> He he was not he just he 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 was not trying to you know beat him when he was sick kind of a thing. So I remember this moment and I I didn't understand why they weren't playing uh, their game. And after some hours of or something like that, they played few moves and they did to a draw. So then I uh, I heard that he was not feeling well mm-hmm. and he got some kind of uh, health problem. uh and uh, yeah it's a lot of memories of course uh, from 2001 uh but always the, it, it will be i mean i can play many times in why can say but that will be uh, the most special event yeah. i can also remember that i interviewed you in 2001 for chess magazine ah, okay. <laughs> that was also nice yeah okay. yeah uh, right right yeah Okay, but well, we move on a bit with the other tournaments because it's great to talk about the old times, of course. One of the most important victories in Vike was, I think, two thousand twelve. But you, when you won the B Group, right? Yes. Because you were a bit maybe, maybe not really in a good form or something in the years before, or you maybe a bit stuck or something on a certain level. But twenty twelve, winning the B Group, was very important, and you jumped over the twenty seven hundred one year later. Can you tell me something? How, how important that was, that moment to to win that so, tournament? I I think it all started uh, like pretty much uh, from 2010. So it started with the Asian Games actually, and mm. then uh, Asian Individual Championship uh, in 2011, which I won. Yeah. And then I got uh, uh, invited to play in the B Group of 2012. Uh, why uh, why can't say? and uh, you know this is i was already uh, close to 2700 but i haven't crossed uh, 2700 uh, at that time so i really wanted to win and to uh, qualify for the a group and uh, uh, i started with three victories and uh, after that i didn't have any kind of uh, uh, problem to keep the momentum but in why can't say it happens that whoever is leading at the end of you know like the penalty met round or something goes wrong and then you are always in a tense situation in the last round uh, but uh, eventually i uh, i uh, managed to win the event and um, i must say that it is really um, a, a very important victory uh, to um, to Uh, uh cross the 2700 uh, barrier and not only that but to fight against the uh, top players uh, naturally after that uh, i crossed 2700 uh, uh, by the time i was playing next why can't say a group yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah since then i'm above yeah that's cool yeah did you kind of stabilized yeah did yeah. What, it was also Okay, helpful. Then, when did you move to Serbia, and when did you decide to have a base more or less in Europe? And how uh, important was it for you for your game in general? Because I so got it, the impression that you stabilized. You're a very stable player since I don't know since 2012 or something at least, 2700 yeah, yeah, or I, above, and I, top I, 20, top 10. Yeah. Um, tell me something about it. Moving to to Europe. <laughs> so i was uh, i was uh, above 2700 uh, since 2013 apart from one list i might have uh, dropped to 2690 90 or 80 yeah um yeah i, I my highest is uh, was 2770 uh, i think in 2016 or 17 uh, one of these uh, list um i moved to uh, uh, europe uh, in 2015 um of course uh, a, um i i mean uh, it the uh, one of the major uh, things uh, obviously is the lesser travel uh, it's it's clear 
uh, because when I was traveling from India, I, uh, like uh, I took uh, some energy from me and uh, like eventually I would be t- get tired and stuff like that. Uh, so when I was traveling, uh, you know, it's like one and a half hour, two hours. It's like piece of cake <laughs> in, within Europe. Um, so uh, I think uh, that obviously helped me. Besides that, also uh, many of uh, the practice partners uh, with whom I am uh, re- working regularly, uh, they are based in Austria or uh, Czech Republic and uh, you know all the neighboring countries so uh, it was pretty easy to organize the camps uh, for travel and everything else so definitely it uh, it it helped me uh, to uh, to go a step further uh, because I was um, I was around 27 20 for uh, you know this 2013 and 14 yeah. um, but then uh, I got uh, next jump uh, re- crossed 2750 and uh, even reached 2770 uh, in uh, two years so this was uh, quite uh, useful and uh, then uh, me and my wife moved to Prague and yeah. uh, since 2018 Sp- of course, also played a role that your wife is from Serbia, yeah, that is yes. uh, Stojanovic. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, there's also a reason to move to Europe. That of course. <laughs> no, of course, I uh, certainly and uh, uh, I mean it. It it, it is. Uh, uh, um, I mean, without her help, I couldn't have uh, mm-hmm. managed to do uh, probably ninety percent of the things in uh, Serbia, and uh, obviously. Uh, uh, when she's there, it gives me a lot of confidence that I can just rely on her and do my things. Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, that obviously frees my mind and uh, just to focus on chess. Um, that's, uh, I mean, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the reason I can, uh, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons uh, why I moved to Serbia uh, in the first place. Sure. Uh, because uh, I know some, uh, I, I, I start to understand some of the words in Serbian, but okay, I really can't communicate uh, and do things in okay. Serbian. But you know, do you live in Prague now, yeah? Do you, yeah, you, yeah. you also work a lot with uh, David Navarra? Yes, yes. He also lives in Prague or something? or is Yes, he... yes, that's, yeah, yeah. that is correct. Uh, yeah. He lives, no, uh, he, um, he was actually living 15 minutes uh um from uh, my previous flat uh and uh, it was pretty convenient uh, for, uh, for us to work or uh, play games or you know things like that and uh, i have been uh, working with him um since uh, uh, 2013 or uh, even before actually so quite a long time so he's my good friend uh and uh, of course we support each other uh, in uh, uh, in important events and uh, we uh, yeah. uh, we discuss uh, various ideas and stuff like that um so it's it's uh, it's great uh, i mean david uh, has been uh, 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 very uh, he's a very kind person and also you know he uh, uh, he's always cheering when you know if you are not doing well or you know he's like this kind of person so it's very good uh, to have him as uh, as a friend and uh, to work with him uh, in chess okay yeah he's a brilliant player of course yeah yeah would you suggest um well there are a lot of young players of course in india yeah yes we all know the names of gukesh and nihal and pragwas so would you advise them in the future, perhaps to move to have a base in Europe, perhaps to get stronger. Uh, I I think I was asked this question already. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, probably a couple of years uh, in one of the interviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, of course it uh, it depends on um, uh, person to person. Uh, I mean, still they are really young. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, also now uh, in in india uh, uh, 
the events and the general interest has uh, increased uh, drastically in last one uh, one two years. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, with uh, more and more uh, players uh, coming up naturally, uh, they bring medals and uh, uh, more chess fans and so on. Uh, so if uh, if there are more events in India, like, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, a cycle, I would say, like more top level events, then it's possible for... Uh, for them to uh, uh, shuffle between uh, play, you know, he can, they can play, they have their uh, tournaments and then they can come to play in Europe and things like that. But if uh, they do not have a lot of events in India, then probably it's better to uh, have a base in Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it worked pretty, pretty well for Vishy Anand, for example. Oh, it, it worked <laughs> great for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's cool. Okay, great. Do do you feel kind of motivated now that all those youngsters are coming up, or does it give you some extra pressure? <laughs> um, I I always uh, like pressure, uh, and uh, I, I when I see the uh, uh, youngsters playing or juniors playing uh, interesting games, uh, I always uh, uh, like to learn uh, and. Uh, to uh, to stay in touch with uh, mm. how uh, theory or the game patterns are uh, evolving. Uh, usually, you know, the, some of the concepts which were a uh, couple of years ago uh, are not valid any any longer. You know, uh, so people are playing uh, uh, different chess or let's say, influence of um, different kinds of engines, whatever you may call it. Uh, so when such thing happens, obviously some of the principles uh, in chess need to be altered in the sense you cannot, uh, uh, one cannot say the same uh, principles or concepts which were uh, existent uh, since, I don't know, many, say, yeah. uh, a couple of uh, uh, years. And uh, uh, unless you are in uh, touch and uh, you understand the game of the current generation, uh, which, uh, which, which is very important in my uh, understanding to understand how uh, it is evolving and uh, to uh, make yourself uh, uh, open to uh, uh, adapt to the situation because I think this is uh, one of the greatest strengths of uh, Anand. Uh, so he was probably like in the bridge of between the computer and before computer because he he was good with uh, uh, he was he was good before uh, uh, engines started uh, becoming stronger, but then he was probably uh, the uh, the best uh, player who adapted uh, using the engine and uh, you know take the maximum benefit and then also later on you know various uh, youngsters and so on so i believe that's uh, that's uh, always good uh, to have uh, youngsters uh, of course there uh, it will always be a healthy uh, challenge uh, and uh, uh, they also bring freshness uh, into the team when we are playing uh, team events and uh, when I am discussing some ideas or uh, various chess concepts with them, it's great, uh, great to have uh, inputs from these juniors. Dear listeners, I hope you enjoyed the first part of the interview with Super Grandmaster Pentala Hari Krishna from India in which we talked about the Tata Steel Chess Tournament 2021. In the second part, we're going to talk about his first book, Beat the French with Knight C3, and about his plans for the future. There's also a great story coming up about his meeting with a former world chess champion. Subscribe to the podcast to receive the next episode automatically. This helps me to keep the podcast going and to reach more chess fans and listeners. Questions and suggestions can be sent to talkingchess at gmail.com or you may send a tweet to Chess Classic. Thanks again for listening. Stay healthy and stay safe. Bye-bye.